Welcome to Obsession Engineering and the Rapid Honda British Superbike. Um, very shortly, we're going to be getting out on that, on track for the very first time. And if I'm honest, I'm a little bit daunted by it. It is quite nervous having a full-blown superbike, uh, but luckily Franco is more excited than anything else. So we've had a little bit of training on the uh, Superstock bike to get him back up to speed. So now he's familiar with the bike he really, really likes. And now all we've got to try and do is get the Superbike to feel like that, but better. Uh, Rob is just putting the uh, last bits of tape on the belly pan fasteners because uh, before we warm the bike up, we actually have a heater blowing on the sump to get the oil temperature up a little bit. Uh, but I'll give you a little bit of a run through of our bike. So, uh, mudguard and the uh, fuel tank, we haven't had a chance to get them painted yet. And if I'm honest, this isn't the finished paint scheme. This is, in effect, our testing scheme because we've got some silver fairing left from last year. Um, but we'll start at the front and go through the bike. So compared to the Superbike Franco rode last year when he rode for Honda, uh, we haven't got the Nissin brakes, we've got Brembo. So we've got the HPK monoblocks on 336 mil uh, diameter, six millimeter discs. Uh, the centers to fit the OZ wheels with the offset we wanted are actually bespoke to us and the Fairburn team have got them as well. So we've got uh, big radiators and oil cooler in there. We've got the RVP, no, the RSP25 fork, so that's the full Superbike 10 grand fork, uh, which are lovely and pretty with all the bits wasted out the bottom of them down there. I've learnt already that makes them uh, really awkward to clean. Right, up the top here, uh, we've taken off the Honda yokes because they're non-adjustable. Uh, and if you want different offset ones, you've got to buy another set of yokes. We've gone with some Harris offset adjustable yokes. So we've got four millimetres of adjustment in offset, which is really, really critical to getting the trail figure we want. Uh, we are starting on, uh, well, half a millimetre different to what Honda had and a millimetre different to what the super stock bike is. Obviously, it's Motec Electronics, which if I turn the dashboard on, even has Franco's number on it. Um, and then obviously... We can alter fork heights, offset. You can actually alter the inserts in the steering head to move the whole front end forward and backwards or at different angles. Uh, we've changed to spider clip-ons, which have even got Franco's little logo on them. We are trying a hell thumb brake. Uh, we do have a scooter brake to test as well. Obviously, span adjuster. Uh, it's actually the Honda kit throttle that you use with, um, with the Motec Electronics. Uh, uh, uh. Right, if we come a bit further down, uh, engine is direct from Honda Racing in Louth to a very legal but definitely superbike spec. Uh, Motec Electronics with the shifters and everything. We've got Spider rear sets. So these are obviously branded up, but these are the same we ran on the Superstocker. We know them, we like them, they're strong and they look really cool. In the back of the bike is the Olin's RVP40 uh, twin tube rear shock. A mere five and a bit thousand pounds uh, and that attaches through a relatively linear rate linkage into the big suitor billet swinging arm there's oz wheels at the back rental sprockets a backy chain uh, uh, uh. right our exhaust system the rear floating disc i particularly like uh, and again the um, carriers for the disc actually had to be made specifically for us so they're really really trick and so that's basically our little superbike. Pete's just taking care of our four, final warm-up cycle on our fancy superbike. Uh, Franco has been out and done a couple of laps on the superstocker to get his eye in for the day. Are you excited? Yeah, that's just seeing Pete over there. That one's starting to feel slow now, so... Which is a weird thing to say, isn't it? It is a bit, so, yeah. Yeah, get on that thing, get get used to bar positions, foot pegs. Um, yeah, not looking for lap times really, just want to get comfortable to be honest. So, Let's see how go. it does. Let's go. Nice HJC helmet as well, man. It's spot on, isn't it? Lovely! The stickers aren't looking too good at the minute because Pete did them. <laughs> right, here we go. First garage rollout on our fancy new superbike. Remember clutches at the top this time. So Franco's out on track 
and we've set the bike as close to the super stock bike as we can realistically get it. Uh, we're talking within a millimetre or two, pretty much everywhere on the geometry, seat height, uh, foot, foot peg positions, handlebars, everything is really, really similar to the stocker, so it shouldn't feel too alien. But there's a lot of very different stuff on that bike, so it is going to feel different. Or at least if it didn't, you'd kind of feel like you'd wasted about 50 grand. Right, he's going around there. We've got fingers crossed. Pete's on the lap timing. We'll wait and see how happy he is when he comes back. First flying lap then, Pete. Sub two minutes already. Yeah, good, 59.8, so that's uh, pretty cool because that's what we did it with the stocker the first, our first session today. So looks like we've matched that already on the second lap, so that's good. I mean, we know from last year that he can go quite a lot faster than that, but at least he's sort of in the same ballpark as the soccer straight out of the box. Yeah, we've got three days here, and I'm sure we'll, the times will go lower. So, the main thing is getting used to the bike today, getting comfy, no mistakes, and we're going to learn loads as well, aren't we, Dave? Oh, yes. <laughs> First session done on the superbike. Uh, what are you thinking? Awesome. I was complaining that one wasn't fast enough, and that one was fast enough. <laughs> Yeah, like I say, we're just moving levers around like that um, to get back out. But yeah, it's, we're we going. We, yeah, we enjoyed that. Right, most immediate difference other than the speed compared to the stocker. It just tows the line a lot better, really. Um, I struggle with the front. Um, off the brake was running wide, but yeah, let off the brake, off the throttle, and the, the front just tows in. Um, it's it's awesome. Yeah. The end of day one of testing completed. Um, the screen is only the minor detail of things we've tested today. So we've done uh, half a dozen different runs on the bike. The biggest thing we've been trying today, uh, once you've done a couple of runs to get comfortable, uh, and that piece of tank foam makes this tank to handlebar position exactly the same as the stocker, um, we've been changing ride height in the rear. And there is actually, if we look down here, um, like a ride height adjuster in there uh, that alters the actual linkage so it makes a tiny difference to the actual linkage ratio but it's a lot quicker to get to to do your ride height changes than taking the top uh, the shock out because you can't get to the ride height adjuster on the shock every time so we've been going up and down with the bike to see basically what works and what doesn't and we now know if we're below a certain measurement uh, we don't create any grip which we sort of knew from the super stock bike but we had to reaffirm on this bike because obviously the linkage and the swinging arms different and we've worked out the ballpark of where we can go with the rear high wise uh, so depending on how much turning and how much stability we want so we've done a load of work on that which has been really really positive today uh, we have a plan for tomorrow including gearing a wheelbase change uh, a different rear brake setup um, and there will be a few other bits we're going to do tomorrow as well, including some front ride height. So yes, it isn't just riding around on motorbikes, it is actually relatively technical. We have also been through a couple of uh, rear tyres. Uh, yeah, I think that's about done. The oddity with this place is the tyre looks terrible, but the grip level's actually not too bad. So even though these are absolutely shot, they were still doing a reasonable lap time. Uh, the front tyre is actually really, really good around here because it's basically everywhere you're on throttle. Um, but yeah, we'll go and spend a couple of quid, put some new ones on. Born out of our unique racing and professional road riding heritage, Rapid has been pushing the boundaries of what it means to ride well for over 25 years. Our vastly experienced coaching team includes TT racers, police class one qualified riders, and our own British Superbike team. This unique blend of expertise gives us a real edge when it comes to getting the best from a modern, high performance machine. And by feeding this directly into our courses, we provide the most effective rider development available. Right, day two. Uh, it is lovely and sunny. There is almost no wind, but it's not that warm here. It's only 21 degrees track temperature for the first run, and it is half 10 in the morning. It is going to be nice later. Uh, so Franco's going out. The first run today is a few little settings tweaked from yesterday, and we've changed his handlebar positions um, because he's comfy, 
but it might be better if we tweak stuff. So we're changing uh, and our foot peg positions this morning and then we're going on to some uh, ride height settings on the front of the bike, uh, see how that reacts. And here it comes. You know, steady first lap. So Franco went out for his first run of the day and managed to get within about 100 metres of the pit lane on the second lap and the bike just stopped, yeah. just got out. Uh, and so we've lost over an hour because we've had a fuel pump failure uh, and unfortunately some of the bolts in the bottom of the fuel tank were rounded off the older pump in. So we've had to drill some bolts out and mess around and it's been a right faff and it's been quite annoying because we've lost valuable testing time. Uh, but we are now bolting everything back together, warming her up. And before you know it, we'll be back on track. It was a bit annoying, really. Start my first flying lap and bike died, but I said to Matt, I'd much rather this happen now than round one and, and mess on with that. At least we can get that change and sort of it out quicker next time. And when we go racing, we'll have a spare tank built up with a pump in it and everything else. So it'll be, if we do ever have a fuel pump issue again, it'll be tank off, tank on, five minutes. Yeah, that's annoying, but so it's happened. Like. And, uh, yeah. yeah, rather it happen now. Yeah. Stressful in the sense that uh, an issue that really we didn't expect, did it, Dave? So it was a fuel pump issue. So anyway, we got that sorted, but it was a bit harder job than we expected, let me put it that way. And uh, yeah, he's got it out, he's got going, which is great. Um, now we can really, hopefully, just keep him bombing out there. I know you want to make some chassis changes, so fingers crossed, Dave. We'll get him going even quicker. That's it. We can enjoy some sunshine. We can. Well, we're never in it. We're in the garage. It's shady. You're, you're going spotting next, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah. I thought it was a good idea to have a little stroll in the sunshine, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's good to go spotting because we need to look what other riders are doing. You know, obviously we're thinking about a gear change, gearing change, so I want to see that. I want to look at that and see what he's riding like in that as well. So, Crack it. Good, yeah. Let's get going, Pete. Let's go. <laughs> V in the corner off a lot. Bit of spin over the top. This place looks cool. Stepping out into a uh, increasingly windy pit lane. Um, right, we've had lunch. We are, well, I mean, we had lunch late because it's Spain. Uh, it's quarter past three in the afternoon. Uh, we've had a busy morning. After the fuel pump fiasco, we've tried uh, three different settings with the fork height. So we've actually tried four settings overall from what we started on. Um, and so we know what he liked and what he didn't like. The first one he came in and just went, no. So we knew that was the wrong direction, went the other way and tried to do different steps with it. Um, and the first one was really positive. The second one basically went out the end of the sort of setup window the other way, really. So we now pretty much know the range where the fork height tends to work. And now uh, we've used our offset adjustment in our yokes. It's the first time I've ever done an offset adjustment on a bike um, on purpose. So I think he'll like this, but we don't know until we test it, which is why we're testing. So we've been quite busy, haven't we, Rob? It's been very busy, but that's why we're here. We had, I actually, it's all good fun. We've actually quite enjoyed being busy. I yeah, it's nice to have a bit of... Yeah. I haven't looked at my laptop that much today. Here he comes. Uh, and there he is, across the line. Well, he's not coming on lap one, so that's a good sign. <laughs> right, he pulled in because he was having a bit of a quick shifter issue, and we've had this a little bit for a couple of days. Uh, and it's basically when he's hard on the power, holding a bit of back brake to hold the wheelie, uh, it doesn't want to shift at certain points. So uh, we've been in here and we've changed some of the shift settings in it. Tried that, he's gone back out. The tyres that are in it are quite worn, so I'd like him to do another three or four laps on it see a bit more feel with the uh, change we made in the front of the bike uh, hopefully the quick shifter settings will be better and then we'll try some wheelbase settings and some map changes
We're testing lots of stuff today, including your airbag. Annoyingly, yes. First crash on the super bike this year. Just a bit of front chatter, lost the front. The bike looks a bit knackered at the minute, but I think we've it's actually got away out. with it. Well, no, it won't polish out, but yeah, I think it's just little things, really. I'm hoping. You're yeah, right. Yeah, I'm spot on. It's going to happen, isn't it? Um, and I actually did say to you to sort that front chatter out, and you didn't. Um, <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, I was pushing on. I think the lap before that was a, a little bit quicker and I was up, so I thought, let's have it. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. But, I mean, when you can ride a motorbike back to the pits, it's normally not that bad. So I managed to ride it back. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. Day two done. Uh, so, state of the bike. Uh, it's obviously been over the top because we've got gravel rash up here. Uh, and it's pushed the subframe down, which has pulled the tank out of position. Um, hopefully it's not done the tank because they're expensive. Uh, the front tyre is flat, so it's probably done a front wheel. Uh, and it's um, pulled the dashboard off. We have the dashboard and we have uh, another air scoop and bits. Um, the fairing's obviously done. Uh, but once we get the fairing off it and the subframe swapped over, it's hopefully not too bad. So uh, Pete and Rob are on it and I probably ought to really put my camera down and give them a hand. Quite a few hours later, it is dark outside, but we have uh, a stock bike that is missing quite a lot of stuff because that was our spares package for coming here because we were tight on space. But we now have a almost complete superbike. Uh, we have obviously the fairing off the stocker and the rear subframe off it and an exhaust hanger and a, a few bits off that bike, uh, clock bracket, air scoop, actually not masses of stuff but all the stuff that was fiddly come race weekends uh, when we're fully prepped like we'll have a spare handlebar all made up with a throttle master cylinder switch gear and all that on it so we can literally unbolt the handlebar take that one off drop another one on and literally two minutes it'll be to change the handlebar not the hour it's taken to do that one uh, for prep in the morning we have another set of discs in the bike uh, so we're going to bed them in in the morning uh, that's why we've got a scrub tyre on it. Um, so yeah, um, she's got a little patina on her now, but we don't want to be too precious about it anyway. And that's a wrap from our second day at Andalusia. Uh, yes, there has been a bit of a down, but to be fair, we got through a big chunk of testing today. Uh, we've tested four kites, which alter your centre of gravity, your trail, your rake and all sorts of bits. Uh, we've changed some offset settings as well. Um, Franco's been chipping away at the times and bits as well and okay we had a little tip off at the end but he was pushing and we need him to do that to keep himself really sharp and to tell us what the settings really mean so not a perfect day out but actually not that bad so time to go and get some sleep come back and do a bit more tomorrow welcome to day three of the rapid honda test here in spain uh, you'll notice i'm not dave because dave's a bit grumpy today he hasn't had much sleep. We're on to the last day. Uh, we've had a busy few days. Franco decided to lob it at the scenery, which created us even more work, but that's part of the game. So we have a, uh, we have a bike ready to go again. Uh, we have another bike here that is not so much of a bike anymore. But it's our spares package, but the sun's shining. Franco's ready, we're ready. It's gonna be great. As Rob has dutifully pointed out, uh, I'm not in the best of mood today because I didn't sleep very well. We tested a lot of different things over the last couple of days and I don't feel we've got the combinations right of front heights, rear heights, wheelbases, uh, maps and offsets and all the other things you can change in the bike and we have still got a list of things we want to try uh, but we're now getting to the point where I'd like us to be able to do a good lap time and have Franco comfortable on the bike. Um, and so I woke up at three, four o'clock in the morning and I couldn't get back to sleep. So I got the laptop out and started looking through the data uh, and I was looking for certain things like when he gets on the throttle, how much does the anti-squat hold the bike up on the way out the corner? Uh, trying to look a little bit of the patter uh, chat, I think that he was getting that was a part of the reason for his crash. Um, trying to work out what actually happens with the pitch of the bike when he hits the brakes and basically trying to understand how the bikes reacted some of the, to some of the changes we've made and it's quite complicated and my brain melted a little bit um, and I've popped in this morning and popped down to 
see the uh, wonderful lads at Honda Racing and um, Scott let me sit down on his laptop and look at his uh, chassis software because I haven't got mine yet and um, I now have a, an idea of what the reactions on the bike really made a difference to in the actual measurements um, and so I've got a better idea now of where I want the bike to be uh, for today's sessions. Uh, so we've got a couple more bits to test we're going to do um, a short run to begin with three laps to bed some front brake discs in so a nice steady run to like check that and check basically check the bike over and then we'll chuck a fresh front tire in it uh, and wheel change some wheelbase and move forward with our testing program it's all go um, so far we've tried to do quite a lot of this by feel basically by making the changes and listening to franco's feedback and we've got lots of feedback some of it good some of it bad um, and now we need to put all the pieces together which isn't always easy so it's no stress it's all good fun really right so rob is on bike warming up duties um, so this is the dashboard setup we've got on the bike blue light is water temperature because we're cold at the moment red light is oil temperature because we're relatively cold at the moment so you've got this is the screen the rider sees. so you've got your big cooling temperature gear and then you'll have shift lights and obviously your rev counter and then engine brake maps and bits and the really useful one to him is his reference lap so he knows how fast he's actually going and then we scroll through the screens that's like your mechanics engine screen so you've got a load of temperatures lander readings to make sure everything's reading all right battery voltages oil pressure and just like some of your basic stuff on there go on to the next screen is chassis so uh, front and rear suspension positions which are always pretty important i do actually need to uh, reset the front um, brake pressures if i pull the front brake um, we've got that you'll see at the moment the dashboard flashes when i go over seven bar and basically i don't want to go over seven bar when he's bending the brake seat so that's his warning brake light is turned off go on to the third one uh does wheel speed diagnostic stuff and um if you're running re like remote tire pressure sensor monitoring there on there but we don't really use that screen and then back to the beginning so yeah all the really exciting stuff you need to see on your superbike right so today is turning into a bit of a stressful one um we're trying uh wheelbase uh, forks brings us other bits and so far we found more problems than solutions um, we've not got a good feeling with the bike uh, he's trying to push on and trying to go quick when it's not happening yeah. this isn't supposed to be easy right we've had lunch and a bit of a reset uh, the boys are just finishing off the last little detail changes um, and this morning have been a bit challenging and a bit stressful uh, and everything seemed like doom and gloom because the bike really wasn't doing what we wanted uh, and then we tried a different front tyre uh, and went the opposite way with the rear of the bike basically we've been going stiffer and if you look to the data the numbers would suggest that was the way to go um, and then we tried it the other way as a bit of a literally throw an idea at it and see uh, and the rider seemed to like it so sometimes you've got to ignore the numbers and go with the feel and so we've now changed some gearing again wheelbase again uh rear spring setting front tire uh and we're going to go and have a run around and see if that's any better uh, and there is two things i need to report as well before that uh, a big thank you to honda they have bought a tire machine with them and have been doing our uh, tire changes for us um, so a massive 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 thank you to carlos uh nicest guy in the paddock absolute legend been brilliant with us all week uh, and he's got a baldy mate called cammy and he was there as well so thanks boys um, and there was a near disaster uh, when i'd been for my post lunch uh, sit down and pulled the very last sheet of paper out of the dispenser but shall we say luckily it was clean so we got away with that one right a couple of minutes riding with his helmet on we'll go and have another go let's see if we can actually make some progress on the last afternoon
So with our new settings in, uh, we're trying to get Franco to do a sort of shortish race runner, like a 10 lapper, which around here is a three mile circuit. So it's a reasonable length. Uh, how are we feeling, Matt? Tired, very tired, but excited, positive. Are we poor now? Not yet, no, always want a little bit more. So if anyone's feeling like they want to sponsor and get us on board, we've got some nice weekend hospitality packages available. Have your nice company name on the side of the bike for the weekend. Bit of hospitality, nice food. Thrill of the chase. And they get to be part of our wonderful team. Exactly, yes. And who wouldn't want that? Exactly. Last afternoon, the wind died down. Amid the sun's out, it's actually t-shirt weather. So it's certainly better than it would have been at Cattle Park at the moment. Right, so that pit stop was uh, he'd fired himself out of the seat again, twice in a row. And when we looked at the data, he was at about 30 degrees lean angle going over the crest of a hill at 98.5% throttle on the shortest gearing we've ever run in that bike um, and wondered what happened. So um, uh, he's learning. Um, that bike does not slide quite as nicely as the stocker, so when it does slide, it's bigger. Um, and you know so we had a little chat about that we put a slightly softer uh, map in it uh, so he can be a bit more aggressive with it without it trying to kill him into death and uh, he's gone out to do a bit more basically what i've done for the last run is told him don't give a damn about the lap times go out and basically just get used to sliding the thing around and having a bit of fun with it and i can hear him sliding it around having fun with it behind me so <sighs> He was actually smiling though, so that's got to be positive. Here we go. Final pit entry of our test. We've tried lots and lots of things. Um, messed my head up a little bit, some of it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's why we do it. Um, hopefully we can have a bit of a better setup. It's going to be more relevant at Donington. Um, so not what we were hoping for really, but it's happened and we'll just keep chipping away for our one. In general though, do you actually like your motorbike? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beast, it's hard to ride. Um, it does scare me and I think that's why a lot of us do it, so yeah. How different is it to the Stocker? Um, unbelievably diff different in every way to be honest and I don't think I could describe that in a few words I can write a paragraph for you if you really want but you can write I can talk <laughs> <laughs> ultimately I just wanted a better lap time to be honest I would have been totally happy if I'd have gone and got maybe another second off it but I haven't so um, you're just going to have to work harder to make the bike better for me for round one um, we've said in private that if we'd have found a setting that just sort of worked okay and we'd just kept throwing tyres at it, we know we'd have tricked, yes, we not lap time We would have had a quicker lap time, but we wouldn't have learnt half what we've learnt in the past few days. So, yeah, we're going to be a little bit sadder, but we're coming away with a lot more knowledge of the bike and, to be honest, that's why we're here, isn't it? So, we've just got to take it. Loved every second. Have we? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been good. It's been good. That's why we go testing. Learning what doesn't work is as important as learning what does work. So, by the time we get to Donington, I think we've pretty much covered everything that doesn't work. So, we'll be on the pace straight away. <laughs> We're all learning the ropes with the bike itself, and Franco's got a lot to take in, and it's hard to get it right all the time. It doesn't always go swimmingly, but we will get it right. Matt, what's this special bottle for? <laughs> <laughs> You've touched that. Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, premium emergency. premium dot for urine. Uh, for emergency use only. Emergency use only. Yeah, don't touch that end if you're anybody else. <laughs> this has got a white cap on it, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Rob, have you had fun? 
I've had lots of fun, Dave. It's always fun coming motorbike racing, isn't it? It's not always easy. In fact, it's probably never easy. <laughs> but oh, we've been to Spain, haven't we? We've uh, we've learnt a lot of stuff that doesn't work, uh, which will help us to progress. Uh, your back bikes are awesome, aren't they? That's the bottom line. That'll do. <laughs> Honest opinions. Hard work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's like started the week off really good with, with the stocker and we sort of like yeah they look really strong on that and comfy but boy when you jump up to superbike man there's so many things you've got to think about and change and i didn't feel i just look the same bloody bike don't they dave and you're like they're not the same bike they're so different yeah it's tough it's tough in superbikes so that is it the end of our uh, spanish testing program uh we have tested a lot of stuff We've worked a lot of hours, uh, we've done a lot of mileage. Uh, I think we're all tired, and if I'm honest, it has been testing. But you have to do these things. You have to do the hard miles to get to the, hopefully, faster miles. Um, it's never going to be easy, but you've got to work through what doesn't work and work through basically building up our knowledge as a team. and. Yes, the superbike, it might look like a stocker, but it is a whole different beast. And we are still learning. But we are determined we will get there. And we hope you come along for the journey. So thank you for watching and join us again next time for some more Rapid Honda fun.